What's going on, everybody? This is the Blockchain Backer, bringing you the latest cryptocurrency news and analysis. Today, we've got some red action over here in the cryptocurrency market that is also occurring over there in the stock market. So we'll take a peek over here at the Bitcoin price chart, and we'll peek over there at the altcoin market. I was off yesterday. I posted over here on Twitter. There won't be a video today. When I take days off midweek, I watch educational content to increase my knowledge, and I've been looking forward to today's topic because it's a topic I've spent far too long procrastinating about. And today, for me, it's all about NFTs. So yesterday, I spent a lot of time like researching NFTs. I've done, you know, the similar thing a lot of people do, you know, it's like, whatever, I don't really get it. I've spent too much time kind of like putting that on the back burner. So I really spent the entire day understanding NFTs, like wrapping my head around why people are buying them, why do people care about them, and what's going on in the marketplace. So I'll be more than happy to share a lot of the findings that I do have. And we'll touch lightly on that later on in this video, but this isn't going to be a full-blown uh, discussion about NFTs, but I'll at least touch topics on some of the things I found out about yesterday. But otherwise, we'll start off with the charts over here in the cryptocurrency market. Bitcoin's obviously got a red day going on in here. Nothing is really broken over here on Bitcoin, but it's the same things we've been talking about right it's been stuck in a five month fractal at this point this is a bear market fractal from 2018 we know that in 2018 this did come back to back test the trend at some point so we know that we haven't done that yet currently right now over here on bitcoin are we doing it now i i wouldn't be surprised if we would that is does not constitute a back test for me so at some point one would have to assume that i posted about this on twitter several times and we've talked about this in videos several times so just a patient waiting game right now when it comes to Bitcoin. Um, but what this will transpire, of course, into most likely is going to be into the altcoin market. When we look over at the XRP price chart and what's been going on over here, we're looking at this and saying, hey, you know, is this thing ready to break up and move back up to retracement levels at this point? Well, you would have to think if Bitcoin's going to move down in a dramatic way, the altcoin market will probably have a pullback as well. And I would assume the same thing would happen for XRP. When I look at this actual structure here on a short term time frame, we can kind of zoom in on this thing right here. And we see, all right, we're getting back to retracement levels of where this fall took place at. You can see we're getting back up into them. And I do also see an ABC correction showing up in here. So at this point, it needs to get through all of these price levels right in here to indicate that there's any further up moves before a deeper correction comes. But if that is an ABC correction happening in here, then you have to assume, hey, there's a further move down. Typically in ABCs, a lot of times what we see is zigzags. I've talked about this too, and that we see that the price will fall down uh, an equal leg once again. So if this is true, uh, this area seems to be of interest. But so far, it is looking like an ABC to me right now. So I know we all want prices to break out right away. Um, and I can't control that, but I can at least show you the things that I do see. I see an initial fall. I see an ABC showing up in here. And typically after ABCs, you lead further down. Again, you look at the time frame we're looking at. This is over the course of the last week and a half. I'm not huge on doing uh, very small time frame stuff. My grander perspective is monitoring the bigger structure going on in here. For me personally, I'm not sitting here day trading these tiny little ranges. This is like a washing machine down in here. But that is a common structure that you see in there. You do see an ABC showing up, unable to get through the retracement levels. And if we look at how the whole market has behaved, or at least total three, the entire altcoin market, excluding Bitcoin and excluding Ethereum and looking at all the altcoins combined, we can see that even this total altcoin market cap pulled down over here to that you know top that was set back there on February 1st and February 2nd, which for XRP is way back over here. So XRP is held up with strength, even though the market has been cooling off. But the big question still resides with what's going to happen with Bitcoin over here. And we've been talking about that for the last two weeks. And even the video I put out two days ago, we deep dived into all of this stuff right now. And we're just waiting for a decision to come out of Bitcoin right here. Whenever I have conviction on which one I think it's going to do, I'll come in here with extreme conviction. Um, but on the short term time frame, I presented all the different things that I see happening in here. And there's just a multitude of things. But in the end, my grand perspective is that eventually a retracement comes in here and we get up into these price levels up in here. Whether or not that's going to be a holding thing that goes like this, or if it's going to pull back like the fractal and then shoot its way up, or if we're going to have a longer time period of it. Anybody's guess is as good as mine. But typically in these structures, that's what we end up seeing is a retracement. And so right now we're just kind of stuck 
to be able to rule out some of these things. And once we get some volatility showing up in Bitcoin to give us a more clear direction, we can start ruling things out. But right now, with where we're at right now, nothing nothing for me to do, at least. One of the reversal styles we've been looking at is how this reversal all came into play and that we can see that we've done very similar things down in here for this reversal at this point. And while there's a lot of chop in here, we've seen that that's what can occur in here as well. So, so long as these levels are holding here for Bitcoin, this can't be ruled out. But if Bitcoin did start to take a step down and start taking out at least this level over here around $41,000, well, hey, then finally that can go goodbye. And then we just say this annoying thing still seems to be in play. And that at a minimum be expecting some type of back test on Bitcoin in here, which if we looked at this point right now, I mean, it gets you down there to about $38,000. But until then, until things start breaking or more volatility shows up, we just kind of sit back and wait until that day comes to where we can say, these things are getting ruled out. At least for me, that's that's my thought process right now. Because what we know that has happened at this point is we can see even back in here, where did we pull back up to? We pulled back up into these price levels in here. Where have we pulled back to here with Bitcoin? We've gotten right back up in there again. Even though we did peak a little bit higher, it's a general idea, a general area where we have stopped out at. So annoying as it may be, we're still not breaking away from this thing just yet. And even from a time perspective, if it fell right here, and that's that's been one of the remarkable things about this whole thing as well, has been how time has been so incredible in here, really. And so even from a time perspective, uh, it's it's just about there. So at this point right now, nothing is broken over here on Bitcoin. We can see the lows are still holding, but we'll see when we come on tomorrow if the story is going to be a little different. And you can see how when it was moving in the upward trajectory, what this thing was looking like. And I'll reverse this and we'll take a look at it to see, you know, this is kind of how sloppy it was when it was trending in this direction that, you know, you can still have these types of things happen in here and then whoop, reverses its way back up. So there's still no answer right here on Bitcoin and it's going to be a waiting game and maybe by tomorrow we'll have more answers. But nothing changes on my conviction of what I believe is going to happen with the altcoin market. I'm a bull on the altcoin market. Um, and even when we look at the short term time frame of what has happened here on this pullback that's happened here with the altcoins, our total three, you see the same old thing happening in here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Completing five. Rolling back up for six with a one, two, three, four, five, four, seven. So I do believe that this should be the low based on the structure completely done. This is a typical crashing structure or correction structure that has happened in here, but it's very common for retracements to come in here. So uh, still could be further down going on in here, but I think it's optimistic that that, that level is going to hold. But I think a lot's gonna depend today on what are you doing, Bitcoin? Are you just kind of messing around in here like this, or are we going in for the back test? Heading back down to the $38,000 region right down in here. Maybe $37,500, something like that. Either way, it's just going to depend on if this is the trick for Bitcoin or if this is actually breaking down. And right now, we don't know. It's still holding these lows right now. By tomorrow, we probably will know. So I'll try not to step on my words too much or repeat myself too much, but we're still in that situation. Even with this price movement down that's happened in Bitcoin, nothing is broken. No ranges have broken. And by tomorrow, hopefully, there's some type of answer. Either this is a trick move that'll pop right back up or we finally get a break of a range and we can start ruling things out. Either one, it seems that some type of range break is around the corner pretty soon, and that'll help at least give some more clarity. Otherwise, I'm gonna spend the rest of this video kind of talking about the things that I was looking for yesterday, and I was surprised this, this tweet got so many likes that it did. So it shows there's a lot of interest out there on NFTs, um, and I spent my day you know, watching probably five hours worth of YouTube content and other content. Um, I even purchased a course on NFTs and I watched that too. And I was texting with a buddy yesterday because he's somebody I've always talked to about NFTs. And we both have been in the same boat, just like I can't wrap my head around why people are wanting to spend money on this stuff. And the most common marketplace to buy and sell NFTs is over, over here on OpenSea. And you can explore in here. And first of all, I'm not sponsored by these guys or anything like that. I'm really just kind of showing you the stuff that I found in here. And you can see what the top stuff is in here. You 
guys have probably heard of crypto punks or bored ape yacht club at this point um, and we'll click on bored apes because that's one of the most popular ones out there um, but you've undoubtedly if you've been on twitter you've seen stuff similar to this right you've seen you know these apes for sure you've seen celebrities with these and we'll talk about that in a second but you've seen variations of all this too right whether it's a cat or a bull or a dog or a banana <laughs> whatever it is right people have come up with variations of this and i'm like man how do people come up with so many of these things all at once and the thing that it always reminded me of was like roblox like uh, what i like recognize about these things is like you know we have the exact same images right but like if you've ever played roblox or you've ever seen your kids play roblox before you can interchange out you know the sunglasses the the shirts the hats everything like that and that's what it's always looked like to me is that you know that's what these things really are and there's lots of youtube videos out there actually that can teach you how to do these things you know if you can come up with your base image of what it is come up with your accessories that you want you can run it through a random generator and then boom it'll print out you know 10,000 different variations of whatever accessories you have and whatever colors and whatever backgrounds and it'll randomly generate them all for you so i think there's just like there's a lot of copycats out there on this concept and you know i don't necessarily think it's a bad thing i mean obviously there's a market for it right i mean if we look at the average price of what these you know board apes are 122 ethereum right 123 ethereum just to buy that i mean what is that four hundred thousand dollars at this point right Right? The floor price for the cheapest board ape you can buy is 98 Ethereum, which is, you know, like $300,000. So there's obviously a market for it. And the board ape yacht club, if you don't know, um, this one has really picked up with celebrities. So celebrities have really gotten into this. And, you know, you can go find it on, you know, Jay-Z's profile. You can find it on Eminem. You know, Jimmy Fallon has them. It's kind of a status symbol for celebrities to own their, you know, board ape yacht club NFT avatar, really. You could see that Marshall Mathers or Eminem has his. There's Jimmy Fallon. There's Jay Z with his CryptoPunk. So these guys flash these things, right? So there's obviously something there. And you can go through all these things right now. You even have the Mutant Ape Yacht Club. The floor price on these is, you know, 18.75 Ethereum. You know, run the numbers. That's like $60,000 for the cheapest one of these that you can buy, right? And so there's a lot of competition out there in this market right now where we're seeing a lot of that all over Twitter, different projects trying to promote these things. And, you know, I think the best way to really, you know, based on the research that I've done and the understanding that I have so far is you have to think about it like this, that how much of our time do we spend on the internet versus how much time are we spending walking around living in the real world, right? A lot of this time we're spent, you know, doing what we're doing right now. You're watching a YouTube video, you're over there on Twitter, or you're over on Facebook, or you're over there on Google, and you know, you're in your secondary world. And I know metaverse is a very hot topic, hot buzzword to use right now, but we kind of have these two different lives, right? We have these real lives that we live, we mingle with our family, with our friends, with our neighbors, and then we have the secondary life where we go on the internet. And on the internet, we're kind of like all these equal people, right? But in the real world, you know, people wear jewelry. Jewelry, they have nice cars, they wear expensive clothes, and it's, you know, a status symbol thing, right? But over here on the internet, you know, how do you have your status symbol? How do you have your personal internet persona be flashy? Otherwise, we're all just equals over here on the internet, right? And I think that's a lot of what NFTs are, right? There's, of course, the speculative buying and selling that happens in here, right? People buy, expect the prices to surge for NFTs. They just want to flip them and do all that kind of stuff. But I think underneath it all, right, what is it, what is the actual thing occurring here? And it's a status symbol. And, you know, while it may sound silly, it's like, hey, it's just a JPEG, right? It's just an image. I can copy any of these things right here, save them under my hard drive, and boom, I own a copy of it, right? But it becomes the agreement among everyone that there is only one original. And I know the Mona Lisa is used all the time for the comparison, so I won't use the Mona Lisa. I'll use like a Picasso painting or something like that, right? If you saw a Picasso painting on the wall, that one's going to be millions of dollars, right? Maybe more. I don't even know. And you could pick out the best artist that is alive right Right now have them go sit down next to that painting and have them paint an exact replica of that painting that painting would 
would be really nice, that painting would be really cool, but we would all know it's still not the original. And it's the original that's going to maintain the value. Now, we can all, you know, argue over whether or not these crypto punks are really incredible art or not. They're really just pixelated images. But society as a whole has decided that these are the originals, the ones that get put onto the Ethereum blockchain. These are the originals. These are the ones that have real value. Yep, we can all go to the store and we can buy a poster of our favorite Picasso painting, but it's not the original. It's just an $8 poster. But if I own the original, it's a status symbol that I own a piece of art on the Ethereum blockchain that society deems as being the original. And I am here to show you that I own this original piece of art and you know what collection it comes from and you know that this collection is valuable. And while I can't show you all of my fancy jewelry and fancy cars that I have, this is my online status symbol to show you my wealth. Now, I presume most people watching this channel, including myself, cannot afford a Bored Ape Yacht Club NFT or a CryptoPunks NFT. And that's why there's such a huge market, right? So these are the ones that are real popular with celebrities, like super rich people, right? The people who can afford that and display that they can afford that. You know, you move down the list and things start becoming less expensive, but still expensive nonetheless. I'll just click on this random one right here. I mean, these Creeps Genesis are 2.9 F for the cheapest one, $10,000 still a status symbol right and so based on kind of you know what i'm understanding you know diving into it it's you know people trying to build out their social credibility and their social status and their economic status by having a online persona beyond just being the everyday pleb <laughs> Now, I'm not sitting here saying I completely buy into all of that, but I think I'm starting to get an idea of why people are doing it. Regular people who don't understand NFTs will not will say, you know, uh, okay, that's really silly. But anybody who's within the NFT industry looks at somebody and says, wow, dude, you have a Bored Ape Yacht Club NFT as your Twitter avatar. Uh, yeah, I know exactly what that means. Uh, you got some money. The regular everyday Joe doesn't care. Whatever, who cares? But people in the club, people who are part of it, they know. And really, this is just one aspect of NFTs. It's the one that we see the most of. Sort of just a lot of extreme variations that have happened here with different accessories and different movements of whatever. With still the same kind of base layer that happens within the NFT image, but alterations that occur to each one of them and it comes from a specific collection. And so, you know, they're limited in number. There's only a specific amount of them. And depending on their popularity, right, it makes them more collectible and more valuable. And so for a lot of people, they can't wrap their head around it because if you've never been like, it's, let's say this, if you've never played a video game and paid money to have the skin change on, you know, whatever item you have, whether you have like a bow and arrow or something like that in a video game, or you wanted to change the clothing that you have and you wanted it to be a different style. In most video games or in a lot of video games, it's add-on content. It's extra things that you can buy to change your avatar. And so that's a you know billion dollar industry in itself of people just spending extra money to change the character within the game. So if you go buy Call of Duty, you can spend more money to change things and buy loot crates. I don't know if you can do that. I don't think you can buy loot crates anymore, but you could buy things to change your character and a lot of society has is already used to doing this type of stuff paying money for different skins there's a huge industry for this already so if you've never done that or experienced that then all of this is just new to you right but now it's something that's venturing beyond just being within video games and it's now getting to be your online persona the thing that you show to represent you gets to have its own skin that had value and we all know you had to spend money to get it and that represents your status symbol. And again, this is one aspect of NFTs. There's so many more to them, whether you're, you know, buying real art or if it's music or if it's videos or decentralized property, right? Or different types of assets. But this is the ones that we see the most on. And it's really the only one I'm going to touch on in today's video. But the thing is that we know is that, you know, there's a lot of competition in this field right now for creating these types of things. And you'll see it even in the post I did yesterday, there's a dozen uh, people, you know, promoting whatever NFT project they're doing right now. Um, but it's not in incredibly hard to make these things. You know, the general concept of it is, you know, create a base layer, 
create a bunch of accessories for it and a bunch of backgrounds and then run it through a random generator and have it spit out a bunch of different ones and whatever ones look cool add it to your collection right and i don't think there's anything wrong with that but i think one of the the you know obviously it's cool it creates different stuff people like it they want to be part of a collection i don't think there's anything wrong with it but when you see things like board apes or you see things like crypto punks or even these other ones that we're looking at you know even base floor price of even these ones right here right you're looking at a floor price of 0.8 f so what is that? It's like $2,500, right? The cheapest one of these that you can buy is $2,500. It creates a ton of competition. There's a lot of people out there who are just hanging out in you know, their mom's basement who are putting these things out, trying to create marketing for them and trying to push them out there into the world. There might be false promises of whether or not they're going to be something big or not. And, you know, people buy into it thinking it's going to be the next big thing. It turns out to not be anything. So there's a lot of nuances that come with it as well. Everybody, it's just like with crypto, right? Everybody wants to get in on a specific collection early, hoping that that collection takes off and becomes very valuable. But a lot of research is required to determine whether or not this isn't just some guy hanging out in his mom's basement who has, you know, put together a Photoshop base layer, added a bunch of different accessories, random generated 10,000 and now promoting it as it's the next best, next big thing. So I'm intrigued by it all. I'm starting to understand why people do it. And I'm going to spend more time looking into it. It's obviously a thing. It, it, you know, I, we all want to ignore things that we don't really quite understand. Um, even me personally, I've actually never spent money in a video game to buy skins. My daughter uses, you know, Robux all the time and she'll buy them with her Robux all the time. No questions asked. I'm like, hey, you know that, you know, $50 worth of Robux that you got for Christmas? What did you spend it on? Uh, I bought some wings to put onto my character and I bought a nice headdress. I'm like, what? What? <laughs> Dude, you could have like unlocked some games with that or something. She's like, no, no, I just wanted the wings. I'm like, okay. So <laughs> it's normal culture to do this type of stuff. And for a lot of us, it's hard to, you know, understand that. But I've spent too much time procrastinating it. I've spent too much time ignoring it and dismissing it as if it'll go away. But it's becoming apparent it's not. And so I'm going to start paying a whole lot more attention to it and really diving into it. And I thought I would just kind of touch topics on it just a little bit today. And so I hope you guys like that. And while we talked about it being on the Ethereum blockchain, it's it's starting to venture onto other smart contract platforms as well. You know, Polygon is you know one of the more popular ones over there on OpenSea as well. I know NFTs on XRP are coming in a big way. So it'll be interesting to watch this space morph because one of the big problems with Ethereum is the gas fees. We all know that anybody, if you go buy an NFT over there on OpenSea, you're going to have to pay to mint it when you buy it. And so those gas fees can be astronomical sometimes and it makes it just not worth it to even buy the NFT. So I think there is a struggle there for some more of the smaller stuff to get off the ground because it's so expensive to even get started and you know whatever the you know whatever the gas fee is like let, let's pretend somebody puts a you know big collection of nfts out there on open sea it's a ten thousand you know set and they mark each of them only at ten dollars a piece right well that's great ten bucks cool somebody goes to buy that thing for ten dollars but then they've got to pay let's just say a fifty dollar ethereum gas fee on top of it well, the real price of these NFTs is actually at $60. So it becomes this barrier problem. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see how this all progresses further, expanding beyond Ethereum's blockchain and popularity picking up on other blockchains. But that's for another day. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be watching to see what Bitcoin does in the altcoin market as Bitcoin's here. Is it going to break this low? Uh, can we invalidate some of the other scenarios and start leaning more heavily on other ones? At least that's my perspective. And maybe by tomorrow we'll have an answer. So fingers crossed we do. Otherwise, I'll catch you guys tomorrow. So. Thank you so much for watching. If you're looking for something to do, you can check out my website over here. This is bcbacker.com. This is a course I put together where I deep dive into the previous Bitcoin bull runs, the previous altcoin market cycles, tying them all together to show how the cryptocurrency market has worked in the past. I talk about my personal exit plans in here, and I teach you how to set up your own charts and your own indicators within TradingView and CoinTrader Pro so you can do your own charting. Uh, the most recent market update in here is down there on January 31st. And you can check out all of this educational content over here on bcbacker.com. You can follow me over here on Twitter at bcbacker. And I want to thank you so much for watching my channel. 
If you could, please like this video and give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified of when I create new content and when I go live. As always, this is not investment advice and I am not a financial advisor, but if you ever need a pick-me-up or a little bit of reassurance, just remember that the blockchain backers got your back. Have a good one.